In this lesson, we are going to take a look at the materials in Maxwell Render, the actual materials. And uh, it is worth mentioning that in Maxwell, we have two types of materials. So let's actually create one like this and uh, let's double click on it to open it. And when I say two types of materials, I mean these two types, because in this drop down menu, you can see we have custom and measured data. Now we will start with this measured data and uh, before we proceed, I really want to change just a few things in our environment to make things uh, a little bit more interesting and uh, you'll also see how easy it is to get completely different illumination type and uh, how easy it is to change lighting conditions in Maxwell. Now, I'm not going to change a bunch of these parameters. In fact, I will just enable the sun and uh, collapse this because this guy has really too many settings and uh, you actually don't have to learn them all to get really nice and predictable results from this uh, physical sky. Now, I'm not a morning type of uh, person, but I really enjoy morning type illumination. So let's actually enter here maybe 6.30 in the morning and uh, let's see how that uh, looks. So let's enable the preview render. So now I'm just previewing how that uh, illumination will work and uh, let's even put the sun here on the left side. So I can exit my camera. I really don't have to guess where is the sun. I can enable this show in viewport and uh, as you can see, I will get this uh, little gizmo, which represents the sun. So if I adjust this uh, degree setting, I can actually position the sun as I see fit. So maybe something around uh, 230. That's uh, a little bit more to the left and a bit behind. But I think it could work pretty nice. So let's go back to our camera and do a preview. And see how that works. And uh, that is actually quite good. So let's use this environment. By the way, I hope you noticed how simple it was to change that uh, environment into morning environment. Now let's get back to our materials. As I said, there are two types of materials. While you're in this custom mode, you can change all these guys here. Okay? They are at your disposal. But as soon as you switch to this measured data, Maxwell will open its uh, default directory, which contains this uh, really geeky stuff. So let's try to find something that is uh, understandable in English. So maybe copper, we all know what copper is and let's load it and immediately you will see that these settings here are not available anymore and the reason for that is that Maxwell reads out all these settings from this file and this file this IOR file or index of refraction file contains complex data and that data is acquired in the lab, so it's super precise material. You cannot beat this uh, quality and precision. This is made in actual laboratory, so as good as it gets. Now, some of you will say, well, this doesn't look like copper at all. And in fact, it looks like uh, some sort of uh, eggshell material. And uh, even though visually, you would be right, because it really doesn't resemble copper, it is physically correct. So there must be something else controlling this guy. And the answer is this roughness value, because uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you can relate to the fact that copper is not really rough. It's rather smooth. Its surface is quite smooth. Now let's decrease this value and uh, you will see things uh, starting to happen. So now I reduced the roughness and the material obviously became a little bit more shiny and smooth. So let's reduce it even more, maybe 
20 and uh, now it's actually beginning to look like a real copper so the lowest value that i would suggest here is one and uh, even though you can create materials with values of zero so let's just uh, demonstrate that this kind of material is simply physically impossible so for the lowest value i would suggest that you use one and uh, for the highest value i would say something around uh, 95 96 maybe 97 at maximum so let's dial it down to maybe 10 so it's not perfectly smooth it has some sort of a roughness some sort of a irregularity to it and uh, that's it that's all you have to do to get your realistic looking copper now the benefit of these files is that they set all these settings for you and uh, there are just two additional settings which uh, you can utilize to style your material within the boundaries of uh, predefined color and uh, other surface properties now this anisotropy is uh, let's keep it simple and let's say it's uh, for creating those uh, metal like uh, reflections which are not really round and uh, specular in the lack of a better term they're really elongated so let me show you that that is really specific to metals and i'm sure you've seen those sheets of metal which have a brushed surface and they exhibit this kind of uh, behavior now this angle is pretty much self-explanatory it really defines the angle of how these uh, reflections will appear so you can really change that and uh, define that uh, angle now let's actually turn off both of these guys and uh, let's see how that copper works on our statue so now in maxwell i can really see exactly how real copper looks like at this date and this time exactly on this location so how about that let's uh, preview that and uh, take a look at it this is absolutely magnificent this is as easy as it gets we just loaded the measured data and adjusted the roughness and you cannot get simpler than that of course the problem is that uh, even though maxwell has huge library of this uh, index of refraction files the fact of the matter is that uh, it really cannot have every single material that you want to build inside the library now that is where this custom materials comes to play and uh, in the next lesson we will learn how to set these values manually and produce various materials